Hello and welcome to Ion Port. This program is proudly brought to you by Serene Insurance, Guar Company Limited, the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Ghana Port and Abbas Authority, and Ghana Link, who are the operators of the Integrated Customs Management System. Our proud media partner is the Business and Financial Times. This week, we are focusing our lenses on the port of Takrade, and this is because a lot of activities are ongoing in that particular port as a result of the expansion works. First, the port of Takrade received a deep drafted commercial tanker vessel. Here is a report. We are here in the port of Takrade and we are specifically stationed at the new liquid bulk terminal. Now, the new liquid bulk terminal was officially commissioned by His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, uh, Dr. Al Haji Mahmoud Baumia, on the 15th of September last year, that is 2020. And today, the birth is receiving its first big draft uh, tanker vessel big draft tanker vessel and you can see the vessel just arriving it's coming to berth and uh, it is called the gh parks it is coming to offload some 9500 I, I understand uh, metric tons of gas oil and so i would just like to invite um, mr Christian Donko, who is the branch manager for Inkscape Shipping Agency, uh, they are agents for this particular vessel, to tell us uh, more about this particular vessel. Yes, as Rally uh, said, GH Parks is the name of the vessel, and um, it's um, a chartered vessel, time chartered vessel, no, by BP. And um, I'm happy to say that um, we are the first to receive such a vessel in port of Takrade. Um, the vessel is uh, coming from Lome offshore and um, like a gate rally said she's coming to discharge 9,500 betty tons gas oil to Astra oil they are the receivers of the cargo Inkscape Ghana Limited is very happy and um, we are also proud that um, you know we are the pioneers so to say um, yes this vessel uh, is something that we want to uh, be proud of and then also make sure that have been here the discharge everything concerning the cargo work goes on smoothly. We are moving straight to speak to uh, Captain Ebenezer Gakpe, who is the Deputy Harbour Master in charge of logistics. Uh, he is here and uh, when I came, in fact, when the vessel started approaching, uh, moving from the anchorage to the berth, I realized two tugboats uh, had to go and help it, you know, aid it navigate the waters and come to berth. Uh, can you tell us uh, how you are able to do this? Yeah, thank you very much. And then, uh, to be honest with you, we are very excited to have this vessel here. Okay, to our pilots are well trained. In fact, all the pilots that we have in Tema and Takra, they are well trained to handle vessels bigger than this size, longer than this size, and deeper than this. So the tugboats are actually there to just uh, assist in aiding the pilot to bring the vessel safely to bed. Okay, so we don't have any challenge at all. As I've told you, we are ready. We want to assure our stakeholders that we are ready to take even longer vessels than this, deeper draw vessels than this, because the bed is 60 meters, and the vessel that has just come GH Park is 12.3 meters. So this is a message to our stakeholders that uh, we are well geared to receive bigger vessels than this. So we will be speaking again to uh, Mr. Peter Amu Bediako, who is the uh, human resource manager here at the Port of Takradi. He also has oversight responsibility for marketing and public affairs. Uh, thank you very much indeed, sir. Uh, and thank you for obliging us here on IM Port. We are at a new liquid bulk terminal in your port. That's the Port of Takradi. How does it feel to receive the big draft uh, tanker vessel, uh, GH Parks, this morning? I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. And... Uh, what I can say is that another milestone has been chalked in the history of uh, Takrade port. The port keeps on expanding. What is significant about today is the fact that if you look at the size of the vessel, 183, um, with an arrival birth of 12.3, uh, compared to the old port, which had a, a birth capacity of uh, 120 meters, and a draft of uh, a depth of 8.4 meters. This vessel could not have come into the old port. You understand? So this is a, um, a significant um, success that have been chugged in the annals of the history of the port of Takrade. 
Now, we understand that uh, previously it could take uh, 36 hours for this vessel to discharge uh, whatever um, cargo it has come to discharge. But currently, it's going to take only 23 hours. That, that tells us that there's uh, this element of quick turnaround time. How did you achieve this? No, this was achieved in partnership with our partners, uh, um, Ibistec and uh, Masha Oil, which is a subsidiary of Ibistec. GPHA concessioned this oil uh, terminal to them. And if you look at the old terminal, everything was done manually. When the vessel comes, the pipes have to be plugged in, it takes time and all those kinds of things. The rate at which it was pumped was very slow. But currently, you, if you can see, we have five loading hours for the various car, uh, liquid cargo that we have. And these are automated. And the loading capacity is very high as compared to the load. So definitely, it is good for us. Time is of essence in business, you understand? And in deciding a port to come, um, economic operators take into consideration the time that they will spend in port. So if you do not have the capacity to be able to load or discharge a vessel in quick time, you shoot yourself in the foot. So still staying with the port of Takrade. So the port of Takrade also received a historic vessel and this particular vessel has a length overall of 300 meters. Here is the report. The port of Takrade has received a historic vessel call, the first of its kind in the 93-year history of the port. The vessel with the name Golden Spray is the largest ever vessel to call the port of Takwade with a length overall of 300 meters. She came from Singapore to load out 203,500 metric tons of magnets to China. The vessel which was received at the anchorage of the port is a testament to the safe anchorage of the port of Takwade and management's commitment to employing integrated strategies to ensure quality and cost-efficient service delivery to its clients. So to further discuss the expansion works that are ongoing at the port of Takrade, Iron Port engaged uh, Peter Mobidiako, who is the human resource manager at the port of Takrade, and who also has oversight responsibility over the marketing and public affairs uh, department. We also engaged Kwame Jan Esquire, who is the director and chairman of IBS Tech and also Atlantic Terminal Services Limited, who are also undertaking some expansion works at the port of Takrade. Here is a report. The human resource manager at the port of Takrade, Peter Amobidiakun, has hinted that the port might be migrating from an export-driven port to an import-driven one. He said this could be achieved after the completion of the massive expansion works being undertaken at the port of Takrade. Peter Amobidiakun, who also has an oversight responsibility for the marketing and public affairs department at the port of Takrade, cited the ongoing construction of the Atlantic Terminal Services, which is a multi-purpose container terminal, as the game changer. Yes, definitely, we are on that road. Um, and with the coming on board of eight years, mm. we, it's not going to be an easy journey, but mm. it's something that is worth um, going up for. Mm. Yes, so definitely. But currently, commodity portfolio is skewed towards more of exports. Mm. But it does not necessarily mean that we do not handle imports. Speaking on the live Iron Port interactive program, he said the port of Takrade, aside having the capacity to handle imports, also has the requisite modern equipment to handle all types of cargo. The liquid bulk jet is an example of mm. an automated marine loading arm that is uh, uh, help facilitate the quick discharge of cargo. Um, eight years, eight years. Uh, lawyer just talked about the fact that they bring, bring in an STS to be able to handle mm -hmm. the cargo. Mm. Uh, if you go into the old port, you have two modern Liber mobile cranes with a capacity of 220 tons. We have a mobile group, forklifts, three stackers. We have all the equipment ready. To mm. The director and chairman of Ibestake and Atlantic Terminal Services Limited, Kwame Jan Esquire, lauded the private-public partnership arrangement between the GPHA and Ibestake, which has seen the completion of an off-dock terminal called Takotel, the liquid box terminal, and the ongoing construction of the Atlantic Terminal Services. The success of Ibestake mm. in Takrade, mm. it's not just because uh, we are efficient. Yeah. It is also because GPHA, as an institution, mm. has been very supportive of our endeavors in Takrade. Right. Mm. In the course of our partnership with GPHA, mm. we will fall 
and they will raise us up. Right. Not that they were bending the rules to favor us, but GPHA always was saying, these are Ghanaians. Yeah. These guys are Ghanaians. Mm. Let, this, let us give them an opportunity to prove themselves. Right. He revealed that upon completion, the Atlantic Terminal could receive huge vessels with 20,000 or more TEUs. Kwame Jan Esquire said, contrary to criticisms that Ibis Tech is a local company and does not have the capacity to undertake the, the capital-intensive port business, that argument is without merit because they have proven their critics wrong. We hired Jan Dinu, mm. which is probably, if not the best, among the best marine contractors in the world. Yeah. We hired Ryan Hasconi, mm. which, if not the best, is among the best supervisors or consultants yeah. in the world. Mm. We hired Trinity, one of the best law firms in the world, yeah. UK-based. Yeah. And with this and our own yeah. skills and with institutional support from GPHA, we were able to put this thing together. Yeah. So this myth about capacity has been shattered. Kwame Jan Esquire revealed that even before the completion of the multi-purpose Atlantic Terminal Services Limited, a lot of shipping line giants have expressed interest in using the port of Takrade as their hub. The mega, the giants in the shipping industry are knocking at our door. Right. The giants, all yeah. the giants are knocking at our door yeah. because of the particular advantages that Takrade has yes. in, 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 in this sub-region. Right. So the big guys are uh, trying to partner with us to use Takrade as their hub. Right. So that's we, refreshing. You no, know, very refreshing. Mm -hmm. And we expect um, that when these big guys come on board, then you know Takrade has arrived. He was optimistic that after all the expansion work, a lot of jobs will be created for Ghanaians. Peter Mubediako added that a lot of businesses have also sprung up as a result of the expansion of the port of Takrade. Mantrak, because of the expansion of uh, the port. Yeah has built, I think, their West African head office, whereby they do a lot of servicing of equipment yes. to the mining sector, not only in Ghana, but beyond. Yeah. But it is all because of what is happening in the port of yeah. Takrade. There is a, a company called um, Black Ivy. Mm. Black Ivy, because of the expansion of the port, has acquired 400 acres of land. Okay just about 25 minutes drive from the port. Mm. What, are, what is the motive of acquiring? They intend bringing in multinationals mm. all over the, from the world to come and do assembling of things. What, what do you think that would do? What it will do that is to create more employment Women, yeah. into the metropolis. Mm. Kwame Jan Esquire said local companies, when given the needed opportunity, will be able to undertake and deliver port projects and monies made will stay in the country. That locals, when given the necessary support, are able to deliver. Yes. At least, Mr. Mona, you, yes, you will bear with me that for a project like this, put together by locals, if we make money, where is the money going to? It's staying in Ghana. It stays here. Mm. The money stays here. There is, apart from paying off our loans, yeah. there is no net repatriation of cash. Sure. Peter Mubediak stated that the port of Takrade presents several opportunities and said investors are welcome to partner with GPHA. I think about two years ago, the president uh, gave an executive order that the port should be expanded to the naval base. Right. And that is a huge opportunity yeah. that is lying out there. I take this medium to at least welcome investors. Mm. Lawyer has talked about the institutional support that GPHA gives to investors yeah. for them to partner with GPHA mm. and succeed. Over the last 10 years, he have heard that there have been significant developments to improve port operations to have its attendant impact on goods and services on the market. He said the construction of the dry bulk jetty when completed will do away with the double handling of magnets, bauxites and clinker at the port of Takrade. He was also optimistic that the expansion works at the port will reduce the waiting time of vessels at the anchorage. Vessel coming in to load about 60,000 will take about a week. Mm -hmm. to load. That is the current operation. Yeah. If the uh, project is completed, we are looking at uh, a loading rate of uh, 2,500 ton metric tons per hour. Okay. Per so hour. A max yes, per hour. So the maximum that a 60,000 vessel uh, load, that's maximum about two days wow. the vessel is off. So you can see 
Let's the same pick, pick thing from seven time, yeah. days yeah. to about maximum all things being equal uh, two days. Two days. He revealed that the half year of 2021 has seen some increase in the handling of some cargo as compared to same period 2020. I on port returns after this break. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goyle Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goyle Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small, why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Now, welcome back from the break. Now, news and activities happening within the port and maritime industry. Next. The Minister of Transport, Kuku Furisi Yama, has stated that government will deepen its collaboration with the Centre for Maritime Law Africa, SEMLOS, which is a policy think tank in the maritime sector, in order to formulate policies for the sector. The Minister of Transport made this known when he, together with one of his deputies, Frederick Adum, and the Chief Director of the Ministry, received a delegation from SEMLOS Africa and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. We need a think tank like you who will do the research and tell the policy makers that is the direction that you all need to go. So it needs two things, planning and management. And you cannot plan, you cannot manage if you don't have the available information, if you don't have the right information. So I think that it is important that whatever collaboration that exists, we should continue to deepen it. The minister expressed worry over the incidence of piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, which he said has become very volatile. And whenever your waters are very volatile, you know the consequences of it. It means that your, your, the risk associated with your waters are high, insurance premium will be high, the cost of doing business now, waters today are not good because like people are saying that about 90% of piracy within our waters happen in the Gulf of Guinea. So I think that we need the right information. The right research must be done and feed the policy makers about the way to go. We cannot do it alone. 
He assured that government will continue to support the research work of Semlaw Africa so it will in turn feed government with the right information to be implemented to safeguard the country's marine resources. The executive director of Semlaws Africa, Dr. Kamal Jin Ali, lauded the minister for his immense contribution to the maritime sector. He pledged the commitment of Semlaws Africa to continue to undertake meaningful research that will contribute to the development of the maritime sector. Semlaws Africa presented a plaque to the minister of transport in recognition of his immense contribution to to the maritime sector we do work from the perspective of research we do work from the angle of policy analysis and those pieces of work um, invariably have a space to contribute mm -hmm. to what the ministry does um, we also can be asked based on our expertise although there is vast expertise within the ministry also time constraints maybe at times to look for alternative views we understand that we should also be available if such uh, request is needed on our behalf. The 2020-2021 National Service Badge of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority has donated a water storage facility to the Kum Methodist Basic School. The school has a water closet facility, but students are unable to use it due to the absence of a water storage facility for over two years. Making the presentation, the president of the 2020-2021 National Service Badge, Lincoln Divan Yao Minta, said the National Service personnel were touched by the plight of the school and decided to donate the water storage facility as a way of ameliorating the plight of the school amid the COVID pandemic. We have identified a problem with this school, which is the fact that they have a toilet facility which has been built for two years ago but abandoned because of lack of water storage facility to use the facility. The headmistress of the Queen Methodist Basic School commended the service personnel for the gesture and promised that the water storage facility will be put to good use. The water facility provided will be used well for the benefit of the entire School. Up next, we have some international maritime news. Ships calling to ports in Sierra Leone could face serious fines if found in violation of the International Maritime Organization 2020 measures. From 1st September 2021, ship owners and operators risk penalties of up to $15,000 should they continue to carry fuel with a sulfur content exceeding 0.5% according to the Sierra Leone Ports Authority. The IMO 2020 service charge will be implemented even for ships with an exhaust gas cleaning system installed. The Port Authority, in consultation with the Ministry of Transport and Aviation, consented to implement this important international member state mandate in July 2021. South Korean shipping major HMM reported the highest ever operating profit in the first half of 2021 going up to $2 billion. Container handling volumes increased by 8.4% to 1.93 million TEU in first half 2021 compared to 1.78 million TEU in first half 2020. Container handling volumes increased by 8.4% to 1.93 million TEUs in the first half of 2021 compared to 1.78 million TEU in the first half of 2020. HMM improved earnings in the first half of 2021 and this was mainly led by higher freight rates, increased container handling volumes and fleet operations including 12 24,000 TEU container ships. Two U.S. congressmen have introduced the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2021, the first major update of federal regulations for the global ocean shipping industry since 1998. The bill was introduced by Congressman John Garamendi and Dusty Johnson on, on 10th August. The legislation will support American exports by establishing reciprocal trade opportunities to help reduce the United States' long-standing trade imbalance with China and other countries. It's now time for schedules of vessels in the port, those at Anchorage and those expected in the coming week, plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rate.
We have your comments next. I'm Eric, a Ghanaian, and I watch your program regularly on Facebook. Please, I graduated with MSc in Maritime Science from Ghent University, Belgium, and currently living and working in the Antwerp port in Belgium. I intend to settle back in Ghana and work within the port industry. So I sent my application for job opportunity with Abistec Group with their subsidiary Atlantic Terminal Services last year and was in Ghana January this year. Did follow up and still haven't received a reply. Please, can I get Lawyer Kwame Jan's email address to resend my CV again? I kindly need his help. Well, Eric, Kwame Jan Esquire has agreed to make available this email address to you. Our producer will contact you. Hello, good evening. My name is Kufi Kwachi from Takwade. Congratulations to GPG and Abistec. But my question is, when is Takwade port beginning to receive railroad vessels? Hello, Kufi. According to Peter Mobidiako, the port has always been receiving railroad vessels. Sela, a former student of Mr. Kwame Jan, says, I'm happy Kwame Jan has made great progress with this Takrade port project. I remember Kwame Jan used to talk about this project during lectures at the University of Ghana Law School when I was a student. I hope to get my share of the proceeds of this business as a former student who also urged him on. That's all for this week's episode of Iron Port. Thank you for watching and thanks to the entire crew. Join us same time next week.